Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode, evil co-workers gets what she deserves. How about we take this outside? Train my replacement in a matter of hours? I don't think that's gonna work out well for you. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Evil co-workers gets what she deserves. I began working at a bookstore for my first job a few years ago which for an 18-year-old female nerd was like a dream come true. I first worked up at the customer service desk and then was moved to register for a few months. While working register I became great friends with a lot of the cafe staff. Our bookstore had a cafe that served coffee, and it was only separated by a wall. About four months into the job they trained me for two days to cover cafe in case of an emergency however I ended up being so good at cafe that they made me permanent. Here is where the evil co-worker, EC, enters. Me and EC were friends back when I worked the register so of course as friends do we hanged, I took her out to eat once and paid for the entire bill, and even gave her rides home when her grandfather forgot to pick her up. On my second day in cafe she wrote up an entire paper calling me out for any and every little thing I did wrong in my previous shift. Please keep in mind that I was still new to this. My manager had to step in and tell her that she was out of line. Afterwards she began to sabotage me my refusing to do anything. She was angry because the managers liked me more, thought I did a better job and gave me more hours than they usually did. She would literally leave me with all of the products to grab every night. I complained multiple times to my managers. One manager left and another one tried to step in to fix the situation however she filed a false sexual harassment report on him and got him fired because he was trying to help me. How did I know because I overheard her laughing about it. She would harass me right in front of my cafe customers which got her reported multiple times to corporate. All of my regulars absolutely hated her because she was bad at making the drinks, constantly goofed around loudly and everyone saw her harass me constantly. One of my regulars stuck the middle at her while exiting which made me laugh. She would even scream at other employees and cuss in the middle of the sales floor. I had to continue to give her rides and be her friend to get her to do even a little bit of her job. I did however attempt to report her and of course was ignored. When a customer complained about her sticking up the middle all of the mangers covered her. She knew where the cameras were and took advantage of that to stick it up at the customer. After 7 months it was December EC and another co-worker were working the same shift on December 20th, I was cafe, EC and other co-worker were working go backs. I had a huge cafe rush and was taking a break at customer service to eat some popcorn when EC comes up to me. EC, H-E-Y-Y -Y, can I ask you to do me a huge favor? Me, sure, what do you want? EC, well I have a cart of fiction up in the front and I was wondering if you could finish it for me. Me, yes, I can do that for you before the end of the night. I continue to try to relax and eat my popcorn. EC, like now? Me, can I please have a moment to finish my popcorn? I just finished a cafe rush and would like to take a quick break. She looks at me with a bit of a dirty look and walks off. I'm just wishing I hadn't agreed to help her, but I just wanted the night to go smoothly. After I finish my popcorn, do a few things in cafe, and then go on break, I head back to cafe to relieve my coworker, CW, covering for me. CW, hey I'll give you $20 if you do that cart now. Me, why do you care, I am supposed to be doing this as a favor for EC. CW, well we came in at 12, and we were supposed to have that cart done before leaving at 8, and it's almost 8. Me, okay, just give me a moment to pick up and I'll get to it when I can. EC who is always watching everyone obviously saw me and CW talking, so she heads up to me and CW. EC, I need you to do it now. Me, look if you both keep on bothering me I will not do it. I have other priorities and tonight am very busy. EC, I don't care, you said you would do it, why can't you do it now? After that I finally had it with her talking down at me and bossing me around despite the fact that we began working here at the exact same time and both have the exact same position and rank. Technically speaking I was better than she was at the job because I had a 100% for the secret shop and had my freight get into the top 5 of a company contest. She didn't. Me, I am not going to do it. She just started cussing at me and I ignored her. 
So I go and tell my manager, M, everything that happened, and the manager tells me that I have to do it because they're leaving, on top of maintaining cafe. I just get pissed off. They had all day to take care of the cart, for the 4 hours since my shift began both were fooling around not even touching their cart. So I decide to get some sweet revenge that had been building up for more than one half a year. In the cafe there were cameras so it wasn't like I could do anything abnormal for me to do, I grabbed every piece of restock making sure that every last thing was more than restocked in the cafe, I finished the cart, and then I decided on the perfect revenge plan. It was simple tomorrow was December 21st which is already going to be bad enough however EC had the morning shift aka the next shift after me. So after cleaning all of the counters I decided to fill all 6 coffee pots with kafitsa, a chemical agent used to remove coffee stains which BTW is slightly corrosive so you must use at least one layer of gloves while working with. While cleaning I have seen it eat through two pairs of gloves before. This agent leaves a slimy residue that must be cleaned off three times, once with soap, once with an antibacterial agent, and then a third time with water, and then dried before use. If any of the dishes had coffee stains which a lot did, the stains become solidified by the chemical and can be scrubbed off. It will not come off without scrubbing with a sponge. Then I filled all three sinks to the brim with scorching hot water and fill each sink with every single dish in the entire cafe. Every eating. The plates, spoons, steamers, coffee strainer holders, even the press for the espresso, like literally everything that I could fit into three sinks. No one ever cleaned off the dishes with kafitsa except for me and my former AGM so no one else knew about the corrosive properties of the chemical or how it worked since they dumped all of the work on me. BTW these dishes had no food on them, they were either clean or had coffee stains on them from constant exposure to coffee. To make things better the sinks had an issue draining. The cafe floor would flood if more than one sink drained at the same time which meant that EC could either wait for each one to drain or flood the entire cafe. To be honest I didn't believe others when they said that the sink had draining problems. I just thought that filling all three would be a pain. I do this every two weeks and it only takes me 40 minutes, so I was expecting this to delay her by maybe an hour. She knew about the draining issue. I also had the day off and was going to be at Islands of Adventure for my little sister's birthday and very conveniently had EC on my Snapchat. This was petty however I did it anyways because she was a real bitch. I sent her pictures all day long of me having a great time at a theme park in Orlando while she was stuck there cleaning those dishes and dealing with the holiday rush. When I returned on the 22nd, EC came up to me and very nicely begged me to never do that again. I played stupid and said it was an accident and that I meant to get it all done but I ran out of time. My manager pulled me into his office and I said the exact same thing. Since I had been nice and always truthful for the entire year that I worked there they believed my story that I had run out of time. Apparently the story goes like this, EC came in an hour early like all baristas do to prep cafe and didn't know what to do since of course I always cleaned the dishes with kafitsa. She pulled all three sinks at the same time and flooded the entire cafe. She had to deal with the entire cafe flooding by herself for an hour until more employees came in. It took three employees a total of three hours to clean all of the dishes and the floor. Everyone was upset about it, but everyone except for her believed me when I told them it was an accident. The only accident was the espresso press being ruined. I didn't know that the wooden handle would get hurt. Even if they didn't they couldn't prove from camera footage that I sabotaged her. It just looked like I was doing my regular two-week cleaning and ran out of time. Since all of the restock was there they didn't think my intentions were malicious and couldn't prove that I sabotaged her. That one day made up for months of suffering and getting one of the best managers in the store fired. EC never sabotaged me again and began to grab every piece of restock. I quit three months later after getting a better job. Every time I came in as a customer she was rude to me but fear not this has a happy ending. She got fired three months after I quit, I wonder why. Note, thank you so much to everyone who loved this post or has given me great feedback. I am genuinely sorry for any confusion as far as which page this should be on. I am new on Reddit and was inspired to write about this after reading others' revenge stories. I tried pro-revenge but they said it wasn't pro-revenge. I also tried petty revenge after some feedback however this didn't fit in there either. I can't put it in tales from retail since I am afraid that I talk about how much this individual sucks too much for this story to be allowed. Unless anyone knows of any other pages I could try I have decided to just let this exist here. 
I just wanted to share this story since it's really only one of the times I have ever stood my ground against someone so mean. How about we take this outside? I worked in a Weatherspoons, super cheap UK pub, that was really close to the train station in my city. It happened to be the cheapest place to get drunk before moving on to the clubs and was close enough to loads of other bars. So we would be stacked to the rafters from about 7pm to 11pm, full of absolute sozzled fanny heads. This one particular evening was super busy, and I was collecting empty glasses, I was under a lot of pressure from my boss to get rid of the empties, because they were stacking up on every table. So I was swooping around grabbing up jars, deftly dancing round the drunkards, like a poorly paid ninja. I get to this one table, and there is a drink on the side that has like a dribble left in it, and I mean a dribble. So I thought to myself, sod it, it's going, this lager is tepid, probably been abandoned. No bother, job's a good un. But before I could turn around I was accosted by what I can only describe as a big hairy man, because that's what he was. Very drunk, very angry, he loomed over me and said you gonna get me another one then, you threw away my pint. To which I replied no and attempted to move on with my life. This guy grabbed me, stopped me from leaving and I started to see his crew gather round him all equally pissed and all very goonish. Clearly I had disturbed that alpha buffoon. Do you wanna take this outside? He leered in closely. Yeah go on then, let's take this outside. I replied curtly from out of my skinny face, I'm not a fighter, if you saw my body you would know I was built to run away. I put down the glasses in my hand and casually beckoned him and the rest of his crew outside, flexing my neck muscles and pumping my twiggy arms. I walked out of the door and watched as the whole gaggle of idiots flowed onto the street outside, fight expectant, baying for blood. When the last flatulent steroid had passed the threshold, I turned casually to the bouncers and said don't let these boys back in, they just threatened to attack me. And I sauntered back to work, leaving the group of shafted slime molds, stuck outside, looking very upset. I caught a last glimpse of one particular alpha ball bag, a look of wallpaper paste across his meaty face, still confused, trying to work out what had just happened to him. Train my replacement in a matter of hours? I don't think that's gonna work out well for you. A previous post reminds me of a situation a few years ago. I was a dispatcher for a plumbing slash HVAC slash basement waterproofing company, but I was more of a coordinator. I handled customer bookings, scheduling, some parts ordering, dispatching, etc. As I used to say, I have more hats than a hat rack. Now my techs had their own tools, and I did my work on the computer. I kept bugging the boss for a better computer, and he never got me one, so I built a system at my own expense and brought it into the office. My techs had personal tools, so this was mine. As a matter of fact, 10 years later, it's the system I am typing on now. It has a 4-core processor, and a graphics card capable of supporting 4 monitors. To give you a better idea of how long ago this was, I paid $350 for a 60GB SSD. I used one monitor for the dispatch software, one monitor for Google Maps with traffic overlay, one monitor for Outlook, and one monitor for QuickBooks to issue invoices and purchase orders. When I gave notice, my boss, the owner, and I agreed on three weeks notice as an exit strategy. Unknown to me, the owner was convinced I was bluffing and was just hunting for a raise. He refused to hire a replacement. My boss was more of a field supervisor, the owner handled the office and admin. Finally, the day before my last day, at 2 p.m., I was introduced to the new hire. Seriously? You intend to have me train a guy for a complicated pivotal role in a few hours? I was on a 44-hour schedule, 10 hours Monday through Thursday, and Friday, I was off at 11 a.m. I said my goodbyes and at 11 a.m., began dismantling my computer. First thing I did was format the hard drive, as I told them I was going to do. Fortunately for them, the data was all backed up on the server, except for what had transpired that morning, despite my repeated warnings to trigger a backup into the server at 11 am. The owner came out in a bit of a panic when he saw me taking apart the computer, as he had forgotten that it was me that owned it, and now his dispatch station had no computer. He asked if I could leave the computer behind, and I declined. He set my replacement up on an unused antique computer in a cubicle. It had a fucking CRT monitor, was slow as molasses. The job was hard enough with four screens, I can't imagine doing it with one. This guy wasn't a dummy, but there's no way I could have trained him in a few hours. He had the bare bones of the processes, and that's it. 
By noon I was out the door. My boss spent the remainder of the day and most of the next week in the field, leaving the owner to deal with the fallout, and it was legendary. Nobody could handle it. The replacement quit, just never showed up on the Tuesday, and nobody else in the office could do what I was doing. He dumped PO generation into accounting, which pissed them off with the extra workload. He tried to handle scheduling and dispatching himself, and pissed off a lot of the techs. He stuck one of the CSRs into training for the role, and she wasn't the brightest bulb in the chandelier. The best part? I used to handle after-hours on-call, and since there was nobody with enough experience, the owner had to answer his phone at all hours of the night, seven days a week. That's when the exodus started. Over the next few weeks many of the good techs bailed, jobs were screwed up. I heard that he had two basement waterproofing jobs, each worth five figures, double booked. The company hit the wall, hard. How do I know? About three years ago I reached out to my boss on LinkedIn, and he had moved on to another employer. He offered me a job, and I took it. We get along famously, and he has told me all kinds of stories about the shit that hit the fan when I left. And all they had to do was buy a new computer, and give me enough time to get the new guy in the groove. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.